Hello and welcome. This is Gretchen Heidel and I am live tonight on Monday. Uh, this is This Week in Astrology. I'm going to be going over the full week from March 15th all the way into March 21st. I'm here live tonight on Monday on Facebook and on Instagram. So hello if you're just joining. And go ahead and like and share, like and share with your friends. I know some of you might have had trouble finding me tonight. I made an announcement last week that I was going to be broadcasting on Facebook from my my astrology page because I learned, unfortunately, that some people were not able to comment or to repost or whatever if you weren't friends with me personally. So, um, hello everybody joining live on Instagram. Welcome, welcome. And if you're just joining me now, go ahead and post your astrological sign and also where you are viewing from. I love seeing uh, the... Um, the comments and the different posts here. So welcome everybody. I'm not sure um, if I'm if I'm quite doing this uh, the right way. I'm here on a different uh, device. So welcome everybody who's joining. And so I'm just going to get started. We have a busy astrological week, lots of stuff to go through. And um, so I'm going to get started with today. Today, Monday on March 15th, we started Mercury in Pisces. Okay. Um, Mercury went into Pisces today on Monday. Uh, people are uh, posting their signs. Uh, welcome Capricorn from Vermont, uh, Amy Virgo from Vermont, KT uh, Sagittarius also from Vermont, Jane Moon Wolf, welcome, Rebecca, hello, welcome. Um, and so we have Mercury going into Pisces tonight. It happened at 6.26 p.m. Eastern Time, so earlier than that if you're on the West Coast. Uh, and this is going to be a roughly three-week cycle until April 3rd, Mercury will be in Pisces. Now, if you guys caught me last week, last week was all about Pisces. I talked about Pisces the whole entire time. Uh, Pisces and Neptune and all these different things. So really, it's one of those things that um, Pisces uh, is still going to be active. So we're still technically in Pisces season until Saturday. Um, and uh, we have the sun in Pisces. We have Pallas Athena in Pisces, which is an asteroid. We have uh, Venus in Pisces, and now we have Mercury in Pisces. So that's four planets in Pisces. It's Pisces season, so welcome. Um, <laughs> so if you're if you're born this week, please shout out if it's your birthday. I'd love to wish you happy birthday on on the broadcast. Um, so welcome. Uh, hello, everybody who is joining. We have a lot of people commenting. Um, Marianne Aries from Vermont. Uh, Corbin, hello, Corbin. Uh, Scorpio. Um, uh, Janet from Vermont, Katrina, okay, from Maine, uh, this, this is our first person, uh, Corbin actually is from uh, Georgia, uh, so we have a lot of people uh, saying hi here, and I love that, and so what does Mercury in Pisces mean exactly? Mercury in Pisces, okay, is all about imagination, and so if you think about the the brain mercury is the brain function it's how we think that's how we talk it's how we communicate it's it's our motor vehicles okay it's how we get around and all that that's that's mercury if you if you guys know anything about mythology uh mercury was the winged messenger in in mythology and he had a a chariot and a pegasus so that's kind of fun <laughs> and i think if you guys are joining me live on facebook i think there's an option uh, that you can follow me um, so that you'll always get uh, some updates uh, if I if I go live um, I'm, there's a way that you can do that I'm not exactly sure how uh, I have to look at the screen but I think it allows you to say like would you like to be notified by Gretchen's updates and you can click yes and then you, you'll get reminded on Monday nights uh, when I don't when I join in so when we talk about Mercury and Pisces there's a lot of you know yeah. Pisces is really hard to kind of nail down to one thing because it's said Pisces the sign is said to embody all 12 of the signs. So it's the chameleon, right? And 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 also it's a sign of duality because it's the two fish that are sort of swimming into opposite directions at the same time. So, oh my God. So Pisces is a lot of swirling emotions. So if you think of Pisces, we, we're like meant to kind of integrate our emotional um because it's the 12th house, it's the last sign, it's the 12th sign, and then it goes to number one, which is Aries, which is next, and I'll be talking about Aries a lot tonight too, so if you're an Aries, welcome. Andrea, I think, just joined. Uh, she's an Aries. 
Uh, Brian, hello. Thank you. Thank you. He said that he liked my sweater tonight. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was trying to think of something that was spring, you know, kind of looking while it's still kind of cold here in Vermont. So, um, so yeah. So basically with, with Mercury being in Pisces, our, our thoughts, which is Mercury, is kind of now we're like thinking about our emotions. So if you think about what emotions are, they're feelings, right, in the body. But Mercury is very cerebral and wants to kind of figure things out. Now, I posted about this today on my Astrology Updates page. So if you guys um, follow along, it, it really is um, kind of a hard sign to sort of quantify because it's like our spiritual, it's our connection to God, Buddha, Allah, whoever you pray to, the universe, okay, your angels, your spirit guides, it's all of that stuff. Pisces is associated with past lifetimes. Um, and so we might be thinking a lot about those things and, and we might be wanting to communicate with our spirit guides or get more in touch with our guardian angels or whoever. So basically that's what Pisces is about. Um, and so that's, that's you know, we'll have, we'll, our brain... I dropped my, um, I'm sorry, ah, I dropped my phone here. I don't know how that happened, but it just took a dive. Um, I apologize for Instagram, just kind of got a little, um, <laughs> a little jolt there. So anyway, basically, uh, Pisces is all about that. Um, uh, Monica said she's a little late, no notification. I believe on the, on the Facebook pages, you have to sign up to be notified. Uh, you have to click yes to that. <laughs> Brother Light said he felt me drop. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> um, and let's see. One eight hundred Colette said, uh, "I love the little face with the with the hearts around it." Brother Light said, "Peace." Yes, yes, Brother Light on Instagram. So anyway, so Pisces. I'm trying to to describe that Mercury and Pisces. So so it's all about that esoteric kind of like this stuff. It's like the tarot cards. It's it's astrology. It's our spirit guides. It's all this fun, you know, fun stuff. So, so that's, that's the Piscean Mercury thing. And that's going to really join in with the Pisces sun and also Pisces in, um, Venus, uh, as well, which is our love life. And, and that's a bit of a kind of emotional, you know, we're, we're just, Pisces is emotions. You just can think of it as emotions. It's the water sign. It's the ocean it's deep, it's complex, and it's huge, right? The ocean. Um, and that's our emotional sort of life and our emotional body. My moon is in Pisces. So if you, <laughs> the moon describes a person, uh, how they feel, uh, how they process emotions. And my, my moon is in Pisces. So if you, <laughs> so if you think about that, that's a lot of like emotional processing and I am a, an emotional processor for sure. Amy said, hi from Capricorn, uh, from Vermont. Welcome. Um, so yeah, so, so brother light said he's looking forward to airy season and that is coming up, but we have, ugh, so we have some heavy energy this week. Now, the sun in Pisces, so this is a segue of what's going to happen the rest of this week. So just so that you know, just to recap, Mercury is going into Pisces starting tonight all the way until April 3rd. Okay, so we're going to be in that brain processing emotions situation all the way until April 3rd. However, this week we have really a lot of... Uh, Piscean and we have Pluto energy. So Pluto is going to be very, very activated. Uh, right, you know, this week it's going to be really pretty hardcore. I'm going to just tilt my phone a little bit so that um, it wouldn't be dropping as much. Okay, so the sun in Pisces is going to form a sextile on Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. The sun is going to form a sextile with Pluto. And that's going to be on Tuesday afternoon around like 2.30 or so p.m. And then on Thursday, Venus in Pisces is going to form a sextile with Pluto. Pluto, by the way, is in Capricorn. And that's going to be on the 18th, Thursday the 18th, Venus sextile Pluto. And that's going to be around 1.20 p.m. Let me just tell you. Okay, so now we have Pisces emotions, okay? Excuse me. And they are sextile. Pisces and Capricorns tend to be BFFs in real life, okay? If you're a Pisces or if you're a Capricorn, usually you will be friends with or know a lot of like Pisces or Capricorns, whichever way. Um, so they do tend to be BFFs in life, okay, in general, and they get along well, except, re remember what I always tell you, you have to look at the players involved with 
like sort of these transits and Pluto is never light and fluffy never it's just not like it is the heaviest of heavy um, Pluto and Capricorn is pretty heavy uh, but it's just heavy it's 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 a lot of heaviness okay so when we think of Pluto we think of psychology so for all of you counselors social workers out there um, psychologists psychiatrists all that people are going to be going really getting anxious if you guys uh, are you know if you know anybody who's an addict or you struggle with addiction yourself that's very Plutonian okay so when we think of Pluto um, you think of Hades the Lord of the underworld okay that's basically what Pluto is about and so Pluto when you couple Pluto with Pisces this emotional Pisces whew, that could be a lot I mean there can be some very good deep insightful things happening this week so you might have a lot of epiphanies and a lot of um, sort of uh, you know things that like come up for you Pl Pluto is definitely about like deep psychological processes the Lord of the underworld you know so if you have any kind of like triggers uh, that, that happen to you or any kind of thing that's very Plutonian okay so just to let you know so so um, you want to watch out for that and this week could be could be a, like a little bit of a minefield for triggers now it can be very positive these are sextiles so like it should be positive but you know again with Pluto you just never quite know what's coming um, but you want to make sure that like you can really process your emotions you could have a lot of insight and a lot of um, learning about your own deep processes and your own deep cycles and and uh, you know kind of really really being able to uh, sort of get it you know a hold of your emotional state okay so that's that is Pluto um, and and Pisces so we're gonna have a lot of that and it's gonna the height of it the peak of it is Tuesday and Thursday but it's really gonna be active all week just just saying I even felt it today I had clients that were very like oh a lot a lot a lot of texting people you know things happening um, this one's rushed to the hospital and this one's this and this was that like a lot of like kind of more 911 kind of things so that's just the Pluto that's Pluto being activated um, and so that that kind of influences us now somebody here on Instagram said where how light I happen to agree with that for distress um, uh, lots of learning emotional conversations and all that so here's my blue how light I show this all the time it's a dyed piece of how light Howlite, H-O-W-L-I-T-E. So if you guys, um, it's actually quite an, an inexpensive stone and it looks, without it being dyed, it looks like a piece of marble, um, but it's very, very, very grounding. So I happen to agree that that would be a great stone from Brother Light, uh, set, you know, talked about, about connecting, you know, with oneself. I happen to, because I'm this deep emotional processor, I happen to like this, um, I don't like the, the, the kind of, um, obviously I don't like triggers and things like that, but I like the ability to dig deep and sink deep into top, topics and subjects, um, especially astrology and like other things that are really deep. Like I'm not a person that likes to talk about the weather. I mean, the weather's fine and oh, what did you do today? What did I do today? But I like to get I like to have very, very deep, insightful uh, conversations. And so for me, this kind of energy, I, I sort of like it a little bit. But if you're a person that kind of is uncomfortable with deep, this deep stuff and this, you know, th that can be hard for you. That'll be hard. And that could bring up a lot of, that could dredge up a lot of stuff because Pluto's the lord of the underworld. So think of something hidden or buried or sunk beneath the earth. I mean, that's very Pluto. That's a Pluto realm there. Um, so if you think about something that's sunk down deep into the subconscious mind, the unconscious mind, the, the subconscious, you know, it's all that stuff. So that'll be dredged up something to look forward to. <laughs> but like I said, there could be a lot of insights and a lot of learning. Okay. About yourself. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, Brother Light said, Aries, sun, charge ahead. I am a learner. Yes, I, I love to learn and uh, to think about, you know, these types of things. Monica said, sitting in stillness without 
pressure was your new moon intention so deep insights might come yeah well this is the week of deep insights really this is the week so um andrea said uh healing opportunities yes for sure it's a healing opportunity that's a great way to look at it i love that um but it's you know the part of it being brought up can feel yucky you know that's the part that us humans are like ah i don't want to feel the bad thing i just want to feel good you know um but sometimes i you know sometimes that that bad stuff can be good okay so moving on to to saturday okay is a big day because that's the day the sun enters aries so then we will officially be in aries season um starting on the 20th and it is also like i said to you guys previous weeks the spring equinox actually if you you know in astrology and and also um according to the calendar is really the new year it's not it's not january 1st that was like an arbitrary kind of thing the first day of spring is the new year really so so it's it's the spring equinox okay so that's that's on the 20th people say i don't use astrology but you do you do because astrology is astronomy and it's all as above so below and blah 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 so on the 20th the sun at 5.37 a.m. Eastern Time is going to move into Aries, and that's what we call spring equinox. So the spring equinox is when the sun moves into Aries. So you are using astrology. Everybody always uh, get, I get, gets me on that one. And International Astrology Day, by the way, that is also the 20th, because obviously astrologers are going to use that day as the International Astrology Day, just saying. So this coming weekend is a big weekend, just to let you know. So things will really pep up a lot when the sun goes into Aries. Now, we still have all those other planets in uh, Venus is... is for one more day after gonna be still in Pisces, but that'll be moving into the Aries the next day. That So the weekend of the 20th and the 21st, this coming weekend, is gonna be a very big um, astrological because that's when planets are starting to switch. Now, obviously, Mercury just went into Pisces, and Pallas Athena is gonna be in Pisces all year, um, which is unusual, by the way. Pallas Athena is uh, an asteroid, and she is the goddess of the strategy of war. So if you think of Mars being the god of war, Pallas Athena is the strategy of war. Uh, she's the master chess player and she's in Pisces this whole year. So we're going to have a lot of, a lot of Piscean energy still to come, uh, with Pallas Athena being there. Now, um, so on the 20th, that's going to happen in the a.m. The sun is going to go into Pisces. And then the next day, Venus goes into Pisces on Sunday, the 21st. Uh, Venus will go into Pisces at around 10, 16 a.m. Eastern time. So we're going to have the sun and Venus moving into Aries. Now, what does this mean for both ourselves? Because it's, hello, the sun in Aries. And then our love lives, because that's Venus. The Venus is our love life. So love and finances, okay? So it means you got to grab the bag. You got to grab the grab the money bag, okay? You got to be proactive. So Aries energy is extremely proactive. Where if you could kind of think of Pisces energy is a little more passive. It's a little bit more Yin. Where Aries is young, okay? Uh, Pisces is associated with feminine energy. Aries is associated with masculine energy. Aries is the god of war, ruled by Mars, uh, which, by the way, is in is in uh, Gemini. So that's gonna fire us up because <laughs> that's air. Air air is gonna hit a fire sign, and that'll get us riled up and fired up. Okay, so Aries is a lot more. Um, like I said, masculine, a little more domineering. Let's just say that out loud. Uh, a little bit angry, okay? A little bit aggressive. So if you guys are enjoying these broadcasts, like and share, like and share, especially on Facebook because I'm experimenting with the new way we're doing it here. Like and share. Go ahead and hit that like button because it helps the algorithm and and all that good stuff. And I want to make sure all this is working <laughs> really well um, on because I'm trying this new Facebook page out. Thank you, everybody. You guys are awesome. Um, yay, lots of likes. <laughs> um, so basically, Aries energy is a lot of red. So if you think of Aries as being red, okay, um, these are some red stones that I have here in Carnelian. You guys are so awesome. Carnelian, we have uh, Tiger Iron, um, 
I even have a little piece of, uh, I believe this is red Jasper. Um, so all of that stuff is Aries, even bloodstone. Okay. Is a good Aries stone. Uh, bloodstone actually does have a little, little bit of red in it. If you can see here, um, I don't know if my camera is going to pick that up on Instagram here, but so we have, we have some red energy. Okay. I mean, you think of Aries energy. I just saw this beautiful video on Facebook that had like, it was like all these time-lapse photo, uh, videos of like the flowers waking up for spring, you know, like the tulips coming out of the ground. And, and I'm talking about up here in the Northern hemisphere of the world. Okay. Um, it's Western astrology. That's the kind of astrology I practice. And so, um, if you're up here in the Northern hemisphere, Aries is associated with springtime and this is spring equinox. So when you think of Aries energy, right? Uh, the ground is still ice cold and yet these flowers are pushing through, you know, crocuses and tulips and daffodils and all those, you know, even the dandelions start coming up and the little violets that are on the ground. All of that is Aries energy, the awakening that we come into during this spring equinox time is the energy of Aries. Aries is meant to start things. We suck, and I say we because I'm an Aries, I'm sorry. Don't hate me. Um, we suck at finishing things. We're awesome at starting stuff. So Aries is about pushing through that cold, hard, you know, ground and then coming up and then rising up out of, out of that, you know, we're awakening. And that's the energy of Aries. We're meant to be starters. We're meant to be, you know, pioneers and whatever it is we're doing. We're meant to take charge and have action and all that stuff. And it takes a lot, a lot of energy for those bulbs that are underground to waken up and then to to come up so it takes so much energy for the plants to do that and that aries energy is what this time is about it's it's really magical um, when you look at springtime and how everything kind of comes to life all the animals start mating okay and they start doing their thing everything everybody just kind of wakes up and and all that energy comes alive and that's aries energy I always say Aries, you can look at Aries almost like a lead sled dog, okay? Um, they're they're pushing through the, the snow. It's like the snow is deep and hard to kind of navigate. The lead sled dog has to be the strongest and smartest to kind of like navigate through. And that's basically, I always say Aries is always meant to pioneer and go first, um, which is actually harder. The rest of the sled dogs can draft behind that one in the front but the one in the front has a lot of work to do and that's the life path of Aries it's being self-sufficient um, it's being in, in um, kind of a little naive and and sort of like it's like that new kind of we're called the infants of the zodiac because it's like new energy um, and yes you can be in Aries and be an old soul it just might be the first time that you're doing this new life path um, and that's kind of the theory behind it um, so yeah, so <laughs> Monica said, uh, yes, Iris, Aries suck at finishing things. We really do. We have, we just, we just are not great at doing that. Oh, John, Aries moon, Pisces rising, Libra sun. Nice. I'm in Aries sun, Pisces moon, Leo rising. So I have a little, I have like a combination of, of that Aries and Pisces. So basically, cause I, cause I'm, I have a little bit left over and then I have, I have the, the last and the first. <laughs> That's a little confusing combination. Just saying the, that Aries Pisces thing uh, is a little confusing. So, so if you guys are fire signs, you guys are going to feel the awakening. Okay. So any fire sign, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo, we're going to feel the awakening. Okay. If you are an air sign, you will get invigorated again. Um, so Gemini, Libra, um, Aquarius, you guys will get invigorated. Okay. Cause fire and air, Ooh, we like each other. Okay. Katrina said, Oh my goodness. Both your sons are Aries. Wow. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> How did, how did you drink your, <laughs> did you drink a lot of coffee when they were little? Um, Marianne said, I have so many projects started all of the time. So Aries, Stephanie said fire, she put the fire icons. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of fire energy. So, so basically with all this Aries, we're going to be waking up. And so this is a great time to start new things in the Aries season. Um, it's the most potent, it's the most powerful. And that's what I was saying to you guys, uh, last night or last Monday night, um, that 
the new moon in Aries is the most potent of the whole year. So this new moon is coming on April 11th, just to let you know. And so in Aries, and that'll be the most potent because if you think of starting something new, that's the new moon. And if you think of Aries starting something new, that's what we're meant to do. We're, we're the starters. So then, because we're getting the party started, okay? <laughs> um, so, so then we have the new moon, you know, getting started in Aries. Now, Aries are fighters. We have to be feisty. Uh, we got to be feisty to get started, get everything started. We got to be a little, you know, feisty. Um, so that's kind of an Aries thing. Aries can be a little bit uh, aggressive, too aggressive sometimes. So we got to calm it down, okay? Um, <laughs> we got to learn how to chill just a little bit, us Aries. We, we got to learn how to chill, that's for sure. Um, and so if you, if you are a person that needs more fire, needs more of this get up and go and gumption and you want to start something new, here's, okay, the inside scoop. I'm going to give you guys the inside scoop right now. There's no retrograde planets right now. None. Zero. Okay. And I had so many people, uh, that were asking me about that. There's no retrograde planets. Okay. And the retrogrades really don't start until... I believe it's the last week of, yeah, it's the last week of April, and that's when Pluto goes retrograde, and then all the planets are going to start going retrograde, okay? So we have this little bubble in the beginning of 2021. It's little where we will have no retrograde planet. So that means get it done. Start something. Don't put it off. I have people that are saying, oh, you know, put, I'll put it off until the summer. No, don't do that. Put it, do it now. Okay. Because, uh, the best time to start something is when the planets are not retrograde. Then once you, once we start the retrograde cycles, because every summer we have all the big major planets are retrograde. So we have Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Jupiter will go retrograde. Ugh, you know, you want to start it when, when it's going, everything's going direct. The only planet that's uh, retrograde right now is Vesta, which is an asteroid. And we're, I'm not really that worried about an asteroid being, being retrograde. So, um, oh, John, you have no retrograde planets in your chart. That's pretty cool. I have... I think I have one retrograde planet. Oh, Brian, I love that. Fire, file your taxes and plan a vacation. Yes, that's great. That's exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> Brian said the scotch on the rocks will do the trick. Yeah, that's exactly right. No, no volcano. <laughs> so, so hi, everybody. Welcome. If you're just joining on, on uh, Instagram, like and share. Go ahead and post your astrological sign. Love to hear that. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Uh, so take advantage of the time when everything's moving, okay, in the right direction. Because then once you get into the retrograde cycles, then you got to navigate. Oh, is this right? Is that right? And all that kind of stuff. We do have the next retro Mercury retrograde starting um, in uh, in Gemini. Okay, that'll be in Gemini season. But don't wait until then. Get, get started now uh, on stuff. And especially you don't want to start a new business during Jupiter retrograde. I've talked about this in the past, but it is said in astrology. See, astrology is what we use for timing, okay? And I want to talk about uh, timing in, a, in just a moment. I was using Joe Biden's chart last week, and I'm going to use it again just to, to show you guys. But when we look at an astrological chart, this is just a big complicated clock, really. It's a calendar. This is a circular calendar, basically. Um, it's real complicated, and each and everything has its own timing and its own whatever, but that's what... In astrology, that's what we're looking at, is we're looking at the timing of things. All timing is divine timing, right? So when, like, in, it's kind of interesting. In India, um, everybody has an astrologer. The whole family has an astrologer uh, the, in traditional uh, India. And um, it's kind of fun because my hygienist is, an, is from India. And she thinks of me as a rock star, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, people from India that follow me, even though I do Western astrology. I don't do Vedic astrology, which is the kind that they do. Um, I get a lot of hashtag respect from, from my folks in India. So hello, everybody, if you're from India. Um, but it's all about timing. So in India, you wouldn't have a wedding without consulting with a family astrologist, okay? 
um, you wouldn't have like you, you would just have certain things like timed. And that's basically what astrology is great for is timing. So do it now. Do do it. I'm trying to pack my calendar is full. I'm trying to pack in as much as I can get done before the retrograde start, which is uh, going to be at the end of April. By the way, just a heads up, if you guys are making future plans, the last week of April looks like a bear, a bear. I want to like hibernate in my cave. Okay. I'm just saying. So, so if you guys have anything you're planning for the, I'm staying away from the last week of April. That's when Pluto goes retrograde and there's a full moon and oh, I don't know. It's, it's yucky. It doesn't look good to me at all. I don't like the last week of April. So getting back to timing. So so basically, you want to do things while, while things are not retrograde, like I said, and um, uh, maximize, maximize. So I've talked about Jupiter before, but it is said in astrology that Jupiter retrograde, okay, is the worst time to start a business if you want to make money, which usually you want to make money if you start a business. So it is said that if you start the business during Jupiter retrograde, the business will be more charitable than profitable. Ugh, yikes. So I would say um, don't wait for Jupiter to go retrograde. Do it now, okay? Uh, we have another month and a half. I want to say six six weeks uh, of non-retrograde planets. So I had a question from a lot of people private message me, and I apologize. I can't get to all of your private messages of questions that... If you have a question, you got to ask me live. I know a lot of people get shy. I'm sorry. Um, but you got to ask me live because I can't, I can't process all the do it individually. But I did have people ask me, and I want to make sure that I get to your question uh, from last week. And they, I was talking about how do you find where the signs are in your astrological chart? Well, you have to know the symbol every this is a this is a language of symbols just to let you know astrology i call it astrologies okay because it really has its own language to it in a lot of ways so astrology this is the symbol for pisces this is the symbol for aries and this is mr joe biden's chart our president currently of the united states this is the astrology of aries okay uh, uh, i'm sorry the symbol of aries and so People texted me and they messaged me and they all asked me, what does it mean when you have um, a sign that's split on two houses, like Joe Biden has two, has Aries on two houses. So Joe's uh, beginning part of Aries, if you look, by the way, the houses are numbered, so that makes it easy. So he has Aries on the fourth house of home and family, a little bit here. So if you guys can see on Instagram. And then he also has Aries in the fifth house. Okay, and so what does that mean? Um, it means he has Aries in two energy in two departments. So I actually look at both. I will look at both of those. Like, so part of how Joe lives at home, because if you want to, we're going to like, I'll do his home and family um I'll do home and family for him because half of his home and family is Pisces and the other half is Aries. So he has both. He has the energy of both of those signs in his area of home and family. It means at some point or another, he will live on a lake, an ocean, have a boat, whatever. But then he also has, uh, he has to be in charge and the boss, hashtag Aries, okay, um, the head of, okay, well, I think he's the head of the White House right now, so I would say that's pretty darn, you know, <laughs> that's pretty darn accurate for Joe, right? I mean, Joe's got the, we should call, I guess I should be respectful and call him Mr. Biden or whatever, but, but you know what I mean? I mean, that's the thing. So with, with the, um, with him having two, that means literally he will have uh, like kind of two different types of places. He might even have two homes or or just two different lifestyles ways that he likes to live okay and he'll play those out through his lifetime so obviously uh at this point in his lifetime and by the way his aries is at the last half of the of his fourth house so the fourth house starts in pisces and then quickly goes to to the to aries so i wonder if the beginning of his life if he lived out that more piscean kind of thing and then Okay, he goes into he goes into his Aries dominant, more 
you know, uh, he's the boss, okay? Because Aries love to be the boss. We love to be in charge. We like to be ahead of. We like to delegate and and, and um, be be more supervisors uh, or entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, not not subordinates. Aries hate being subordinate. Uh, that's not even our life path. I mean, we're cardinal. We're first. We're the first of the whole zodiac. We're the first of the year. You know, so we're the first of everything. So it's like Aries don't want to be like in the back of the room. <laughs> you know, that's not our life path. And even the shy Aries. I have shy Aries. I will tell you one thing. Uh, and by the way, Linda Goodman, if anybody remembers Linda Goodman from the 70s, she wrote the sun signs. Um, Linda Goodman was really, she was an Aries, by the way. Um, and she was very good at describing the energy of Aries. I really felt like her books were right on the money. Because, I mean, it's her own sign, so she was able to really capture that. I thought that was pretty cool. Brian asked me where I got the, where you got the chart. Okay, the chart, uh, this chart, um, I, I have obviously online, but astro.com is a great place to get free astrological charts. Um, and you can go on there and, and, um. <laughs> Leo likes to take center stage. I I have clients that are Le shy Leos though too. I mean, you know, um, but it means that your life path is pushing you forward. Okay, that's that's the thing. Like so, even with an Aries that's shy or wants to be reserved or wants to be more, it doesn't. Um, you will be put in a position time and time again, even if it's kicking and screaming to go and do the thing. Okay, that's kind of the way it works. I mean, um, if you're a Virgo and you're trying to hide behind the scenes, that's a little easier. Aries is not really allowed to sort of do that. That's not our life path. We're meant to be doing the thing and taking charge and being up front. And um, I'll tell you, it's, it's interesting. Uh, John said he remembers Linda Goodman studying astrology in the 70s. Yeah. Andrea said, yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, so hello everybody who's joining uh, from Instagram. So yeah, so if you have I have one uh, two signs on one house, that's basically what that means. You take you literally take now there is a type of astrology called whole sign astrology where it kind of makes or whole house astrology whatever it's called where they take it's like each each um, house has one sign assigned to one astrological sign assigned to it. I personally don't use that kind. I am a straight up like traditionalist when it comes to astrology and I use, I, I feel that misses nuance. Uh, because if, see, if, if we were just using one sign for Joe Biden, for example, I wouldn't have known that about like part of his life in childhood or whatever he would have been like, he maybe even would have felt unseen or unheard in his family. Um, that whole thing would be missing here of him wanting to live on the water, him feeling more connected to a home that's on the water or, you know, wanting that whole thing. He, that would be missed if I just use this one sign of like him being in charge and I mean, you know, him being the, the head of his home that I feel like that's, um, missing information. Um, and there's some nuance there that I think is valuable that you miss when you do whole sign. But I know everybody has their own way and that's just my way. That's what resonates with me. And I do, I do, uh, I do that. So, uh, <laughs> Monica said introvert yet friendly Leo. It's the Virgo ascendant and Virgo moon. Yeah. See, so you would be more, you would be more shy if you had Virgo versus all the Leo. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> Oh, hi, Kylie. Colleen uh, said she's late to the party. Uh, Brother Light said he had a question about, do I read reverses in tarot deck? I do not. I do not. I rely on my intuition a lot with cards. And speaking of which, you guys are going to laugh at me. I forgot my cards tonight. So I can still take questions. Uh, just, you know, I'll just use my intuition. Um, but no, I don't use reverses because I just kind of feel the energy if it feels more positive or negative. I don't really go by that. So, um, am I able to personalize charts for gifts? Absolutely. Um, so I was talking about this, uh, last week, I believe, but I do personalized astrological charts, like full reports. It's complicated because we call a chart 
like the report a chart and then we call this a chart so um but this is technically a wheel so it's just a habit a lot of people call this a chart um so that's a thing so it's one of those things that i would say um uh, yes, I do do a report and it's uh, 30 to 40 pages. It's $39.99. So if you guys want one and it's based on your birth, your specific birth information or of a friend or family member or something you can give them as gifts. <sighs> Juliet Moran. Oh, is it an intervention needed? Yeah, I feel like there is one needed. Um, that's not going to be taken kindly to. Also, for some reason, I am feeling a very big, strong pull for Texas, and I'm not sure exactly why, uh, Juliet, but there's a, a, something coming up for me around Texas, so I don't know if that's like a center or a rehab or something that you need to take the person to is in Texas. I don't know why I'm getting Texas or if they're in Texas now. But there's some connection, okay, uh, Juliet, so I hope that helps. Um, but I think that there needs to be something, okay? It, feel, it feels like it's getting worse, okay? So, um, Brother Light said he does not use the reverses in tarot deck either. Yeah, I don't use them. I just use my intuition. Um, so, I want to talk really briefly about Sunday. Not only is Venus moving into... Aries, which I kind of skimmed over, but I just want to say, um, oh my gosh. So when you look at the lens of Venus and Aries, that's going to be a month long lens of being a little bit more young. Okay. Instead of yin. So when you think about the energy of Venus and Aries, that's a little bit more aggressive. That likes a challenge. That's a Venus that likes a challenge. And I am specifically talking about love life here. So that's a challenge in the love life department. A lot of Venus and Aries people like a challenge and they go down a way wrong path with love lovers or partners or boyfriends or girlfriends or whoever they're trying to date just because they're challenging. Ugh. You know, uh, a lot of Venus and Aries people get very um, caught up in the chase, okay? And especially if a person's making you chase and making you play games and making you, you know, uh, you know, come, come chase me, come after me and I'll call, I'll, I'll wait three, five days to call you and text you back. I mean, that can just be, that's not the right person for you. So please don't get caught up in the Venus Aries chasing. Okay. Cause that can be really, and that can be way too aggressive. Okay. Also, um, sometimes Venus and Aries doesn't know when to take no for an answer as far as like dating. And that can be really like, uh, you know, me too movement ask. Okay. I mean, like learn how to say, you know, take, take a no is no. Okay. Um, so, so it's, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like if someone's making you chase them, they're probably not the right person. I mean, yeah, a little bit of that tango esque, you know, uh, foreplay can be fun, um, but it shouldn't be too excessive. And I see Venus and Aries people running, running, running after the wrong partner time and time again. Or if the partner's just like, if they go, hey, you want to go out with me? And the partner and the person's like, sure. They're like, oh, they're so boring. You know, Venus and Aries, like, oh my God. I'm always telling you guys, stop with the, if you, you need to know what, where your Venus is in your chart, but you know, you need to be able to stop and, and, you know, if it's easy and it, and it, and it's good, that's good. I mean, yeah, we like to have a little edge. Okay. We do like to have a little edge, uh, as far as something that you're like, you know, wanting to court and everything else, but oh my goodness, it shouldn't be like all this hard work that all that hard work is too much. So I hope that helps. <laughs> So that's a little, over this next month, we're going to have a little bit more. Now, this can help you if you guys are shy. If you are shy, plugging into this Aries energy can help you, okay? But if you're already kind of mm, loud and too much and boisterous, it's going to make it even more so. So that's the, uh, you know, the up and the down of it. Uh, Stephanie said Venus and Virgo. Ooh, that's, that's. Venus and Virgo, picky, picky, picky. I think I said that to you before, Stephanie. 
Corbin said Venus is Scorpio. Venus is Scorpio is very similar to the Venus and Aries thing. Um, Venus, uh, Scorpio and Aries are actually quite similar, only you guys process a little bit differently. But Aries and Scorpio, I find, are very, very similar. Um, okay, so I want to talk about Sunday because Sunday is very... Um, complicated. So we have the Venus moving into Aries and that's going to be for about a month. Uh, but we also have the fourth quarter lunar cycle happening and that is going to be um, in the sign of uh, Cancer. Okay, so it depends on where Cancer is in your chart. But the fourth quarter lunar cycle is basically uh, in between the new, or sorry, first quarter lunar cycle between the, the new moon and the full moon. So you guys, uh, I always get a bunch of people that go, I didn't write my new moon manifestation list. When's the best time to write it? Okay, if you're going to do a new moon, a second chance new moon, do it. You could do it on the weekend of the spring equinox for sure. Let's go. You know, let's fire up the list. Uh, because, you know, that last new moon uh, kind of was on the 13th. That was last Saturday. Um, so, you know, if you missed it, uh, no, no sweat you can save it for the fourth uh, I keep saying fourth second quarter lunar cycle in cancer so that's going to be happening at 10 40 a.m eastern time on sunday and that's going to be sunday the 21st um and then we have a bunch of other things happening that day so mars is going to form a trine with saturn and then mercury is going to form a sextile with uranus that day Saturday, even maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, even we're, there's going to be a lot of energy that is, I'm just going to say this out loud. Sometimes I, I over explain things. I'm just going to say that could be a panic attack energy. I'm just saying that because Mercury and Uranus, woo, okay, together, those two are the live wires. And then you have Mars getting, going into, um, trining. Saturn, okay, now that could be a lot of energy. That is like a lot of energy all at one time. That is the time to move and to do stuff. Spring clean up in your yard, uh, going through your closet, okay, packing away your recycles or whatever, you're cleaning your closet. Some kind of active energy because that this next weekend will be a lot of active energy. And that's not, if you try to sit around during that, you're going to have too much anxiety. You got panic attacks. Okay. This is about moving. You got to move. I always talk about moving. You want to, you might want to sign up for that yoga class, Zoom, Zoom yoga, <laughs> YouTube yoga. Okay. Whatever you got to do, some kind of something. Go for a walk. Okay. You got to move. Okay. Because that could be like a hyperventilating panic attack kind of energy for real. Like that's a lot of energy, especially on Sunday all day. So you want to move, uh, we could get really too much in our head and we got to move, move it through the body. Um, excuse me. Another way to move energy again, or ground energy. I like to use my stones as you know. Um, and, uh, you know, so yes. Yeah. So, um, if you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to, um, to go ahead and post below. I am going to answer tonight using my intuition. I'm not, I don't, not using cards. I usually do use cards, <laughs> but I forgot them. So they're all the way across the room and I don't want to like stall out the broadcast. So, and if you don't have any qu questions for me, I can always, uh, wrap up the evening. Um, yes, new moon on the 13th was difficult. Pisces moon was opposed to Mars. Yes, exactly. So on the third, that was on the 13th, that new moon this weekend that we just came from, that was on the 13th. Uh, I felt a lot of people were texting me that that weekend about, um, feeling off or whatever, but that's Pisces. Pisces tends to feel it's very murky, cloudy, muddy. Okay. We will shine a little bit brighter in, in Aries. I agree. Brother light. Okay. So, um, John said, where do you thoughts on mystic triangle? I don't really work that much with them. Um, <laughs> Corbin wants to know if I'll get my cards. Not tonight. They're all the way across the room. I can't get them, but, um, you guys, I can answer questions without them. Oh no, Kate. Kate, Kate posted, did, where did my sense of smell go? Mm, girl, did you get tested for COVID? Oh, Kate. 
Kate, I'm feeling it. And all in here. Go get tested, please. Go get tested. Did you did you get tested? And she said, I know. Yeah. Oh, we will send a prayer. We will send a prayer. We will send a prayer. Getting tested Wednesday. Okay, good. Good. Uh ooh, I feel it. I can feel it right in here, Kate. Yep. All all in here. This is my this is my feeling when I feel COVID. I feel all like, ooh, very tight, like super tight. So please, 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 we're going to send Kate lots of love and light, okay? Um, and Reiki for, if you guys know how to do Reiki for good uh, measure, that's, yeah. So Naomi, where are reputable, where are reputable places to buy stones and bracelets? So um, I, I get them everywhere. I get them online. Uh, Spirit Dancer is still on, is online, okay, so Spirit Dancer or um, any kind of, any kind of thing, um, uh, let's see, um, that's local, uh, but you can order online, so I guess it's, I've ordered them from all over the place, Etsy and different, different places. Um, I have been thinking about uh, maybe having links on my website, so I'll have to, you'll have to, um, Juliet said, recent memorial for Uncle Ray. Oh, sending him your love. Yes, of course. Um, Brother Light said, candle lit. Oh, he lit a candle for you. Brother Light on Instagram, Kate, lit, lit a candle for you. Oh, thank you. Crystal Cottage. That's another good local Vermont one if you guys, um, I, I don't know. I, do they, I'm not sure if they're online, but yeah, that's a good place for sure. Support local, small business, all that good stuff is, is really good. Um, all right. So you guys, I, ha I can answer questions, Kate, but I am feeling COVID. I am feeling COVID. Uh, Jocelyn prayers and love for Kate. I'm feeling it all in here, Kate. So just please take really good care of yourself. Um, you know, hopefully it'll be more, uh, asymptomatic for you. KT said, do you see things getting better in Vermont with the virus? Will businesses be open to full capacity? Okay. Um, yes, I do. I do see things getting better. Just to let you guys know, Vermont, because I know a lot of people on here are from Vermont. People don't know this, but um, Vermont in general, uh, every, every single state, by the way, has a birth date. It's the date of the inception of like when it was welcomed into the United States. And Vermont is a double Pisces. So it has Pisces sun and Pisces moon. So all this Piscean energy is a lot of energy for Pisces in Vermont. I'll just say that. But Kate, yes, I do see, I do see business. I mean, some businesses are just going to close. I mean, that's just a thing. Um, and, and what wasn't working is meant to go away. And then things are meant to be new. Okay. Um, there's a lot of new energy being initiated. Okay. So um, but yes, I do think that there's going to be, uh, more. Okay. H creams. I'm not sure how you say that. Uh, do I keep giving energy or move on? And that's on Instagram here. Yeah. 1791. That's right. Uh, Katrina, we were, we were born in 1791 in Vermont. Okay. Um, I can't tell you what to do, obviously, um, H crams. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, but I can't tell you what to do, but I am feeling like this is a domestic situation. I keep seeing a house or an apartment or some kind of a thing. I don't know if literally you're thinking of staying with a person there or moving on and like getting a different place, but there's something involving real estate between this it's not quite like a oh yeah just leave or just stay I don't know why but I feel like there's something involving like a house or an apartment or some kind of a thing um, I can't tell you what to do but I can tell you that I feel that you will be protected and you will be okay if you want to step away um, I feel that all of us kind of inherently know when it's the right time to step away from something uh, sometimes we supersede that and we kind of keep giving something energy. Okay. But I can't, I can say that I don't, it really feels like it's like downward trajectory. Like it doesn't have like a big, like zing feeling to it. So 
I hope that helps. Okay. All right. I have time for one more. Let's see. Okay. God, Kate, I'm, uh, Cram, does that help? Uh, H. Cram, Crams, Cram, I'm not sure. Yes, you're welcome. Does that help? Do you understand the message? I hope that that was, um, oh no, Colleen, yes. Yes, okay, good. I hope you understand that. Um, uh, Colleen said, uh, nerve pain. Yeah, I have to tell you, I think you might, you might, well, first of all, I do feel like it's nerve. I, th I think you had said that the other day that you thought it was nerve. I do think it is a nerve pain and I would go to actually both. I would go to an endonist and a neurologist. Um, I know that you were talking about the trigeminal nerve um, in your face. My mother actually had trigeminal neuralgia. She's watching tonight, so hi. Hi, Mom. Um, and I, I'm hoping that that is not the case with you. Um, but I think it's directly caused by the um, the 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 pain you might need like a root canal or some kind of thing I feel like you need more I think you need more dentistry okay um but I also feel like that has an involvement uh that's getting to be it's way too painful it feels like it's like like it's like a um nerve kind of pain calling and that's in the face and that's that's not good so I hope that that helps um okay good Yay! I hope that helped everybody. Um, so Colleen, I hope that helps. But I, I do feel that you that you need to get a second opinion on your on your dental. I feel like you might end up needing another uh, like a root canal or something. But I also feel like you should probably pursue it further because that's really that's not good. Like I don't like the start of that. And I happen to know that you are a Taurus. And Uranus is going all through Taurus in this next few years, okay? So Uranus is electricity. And if you think of electrical, it can be nerve pain, spasms, tremors, um, all kinds of things like that. So I would attack this from multiple angles. I don't think it's like an either or question. I think you should go to, with both um, because that does feel uh, very painful, the the tooth and the, and the nerve pain that is following that. Um, so I hope, I hope that helps Colleen. Um, I would continue with your own natural healing. I would do all of it. I would throw everything at the kitchen sink at this. Okay. If that makes sense. Uh, because it feels like it really needs, uh, more, I keep feeling like it needs more dental. Uh, but, but I would look at it from a neurologic too, just to cover your bases because that can, that you don't want trigeminal neuralgia. That is not the thing you want. Um, so I would kind of go with both. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Uh, and there are some things like, depending on your diagnosis, I can maybe give you some tips or tricks uh, with that. So I hope that helps everybody tonight. Um, usually I pull a card, but I'm just going to say this. I feel like we still have, this week we have to wrap up that old Pisces energy, okay? Last sign of the Zodiac, last little bit of winter, okay? We're wrapping up the old. We had the new moon last week, which we're going to be starting to grow something new. And then we head into Aries and then we're going to head into that spring equinox, the spring season. So I would say this, we're starting something new. I was a little thrown off tonight because I was starting something new on my broadcast with, with uh, airing live on my Facebook page. Um, I was like very determined in thinking about that instead of <laughs> paying attention to what my supplies were here, but that's okay because you know, I, we're trying new things. Okay. So that's the energy right now. So what I would say to you all is please think about what you want to start. It's not the time to hold back. Okay. Usually on my broadcast, I'm like, wait until this, wait until that, hold off on this. Nope. This is the time to go. Ready, get so get get set and go. So that's the that's the energy of Aries. So please, please, please think about what you'd like to start in your life because oh my goodness, we've been holding back so much because of COVID and 2020 and all the ugh stuff. This is now the time to start new things. 
So I hope that helps everybody. I will remember my cards next week. And if you guys wouldn't mind, go ahead, like and share these pages. And also make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, because Gretchen is going to be starting new things as well. All right, everybody. Take care. Mwah. Lots of love to everybody. And I will see you all next week. Good night.